This NEC meeting has just concluded a full day of discussions on the election outcome and the way ahead. We have recognized that the people of South Africa have made their wishes known in free and fair elections. We accept the outcome of these elections as the will of the people of South Africa. The ANC has emerged from these elections as the largest political party in the country. We are humbled by the confidence that the people of South Africa have shown in the African National Congress. We now say as the National Executive Committee that we have heard the concerns of the people of South Africa. We have also heard their frustrations and recognize their aspirations. The 40% vote for the ANC is a recognition that the ANC remains a pivotal partner in the country's search for a way forward, and that there can be no solution in our country without the ANC. That in itself places a responsibility on the ANC to ensure that there is unity, stability, peace and progress in South Africa. During the course of the discussions of the NEC, we have looked at various different scenarios for setting up government, as the ANC with its 40% return of votes cannot really set up government without cooperating with others. The discussions have been constructive, robust, thoroughgoing, and have enabled us to emerge with a unified consensus position. The NEC meeting has provided clear direction on the work that we must do over the next few days as well as the next few weeks, to establish national and provincial governments that are stable, effective, and advance the interests of the people of South Africa as a whole. The ANC acknowledges that we are at a moment of fundamental consequence in the life of our nation. Our country requires extraordinary leadership and courage to plot a way forward. We must act with speed to safeguard national unity, peace, stability, inclusive economic growth, non-racialism, and non-sexism. We will ensure the continuation of a progressive agenda of social and economic transformation in our country. We have therefore agreed that we will invite political parties to form a government of national unity as the best option to move our country forward. The modalities of the government of national unity will take into account the conditions prevailing at this moment in our country's history. The purpose of the government of national unity must be first and foremost be to tackle the pressing issues that South Africans want to be addressed. These issues include job creation and the growth of our economy that will be inclusive, the high cost of living, service delivery, crime and corruption. The NEC has agreed that this moment calls for the broadest unity of the people of South Africa. This moment also calls for multi-party cooperation and multi-stakeholder collaboration if we are to overcome the severe challenges that confront our country. From the results of these elections, 
It is clear that South Africans expect their leaders to work together to meet their needs. They expect us to find common ground, to overcome our differences, and to act together for the good of everyone. We are committed to ensuring that a government of national unity has the means and the ability to build an inclusive economy, to create jobs, to end corruption, to tackle crime and, and, and to improve the provision of services to our people. In establishing a government of national unity, we would be building on a very rich history of cooperation across divides of politics and ideology. We would be drawing on an experience with which South Africans are familiar and which served our country well at a time of great difficulty and division. Thirty years after the achievement of democracy in 1994, we are, as the people of South Africa, once again called upon to ensure that we collaborate and that political parties should come together to forge a common future for our country. But it is not only political parties that need to come together. We believe that there is a need for a national dialogue which brings together all parties, all social partners, and all sections of society to seek consensus on the actions required to take the country forward. Such a national dialogue will enhance our pressing task of rebuilding social cohesion in a fractured society following a particularly toxic and divisive election campaign. With regard to the practicalities of the way forward, the NEC has benefited from a report on the preliminary, preliminary engagements our task team has had with various political parties. The task team is composed of five national officials, except for the president and the deputy president, that is convened by the Secretary General, together with other members of both the NWC and the NEC, as well as officials who support them. We have already held constructive discussions with a number of parties, the Economic Freedom Fighters, the Encarta Freedom Party, the Democratic Alliance, the National Freedom Party, the Patriotic Alliance. We have also engaged our alliance partners to brief them on the process and will continue to seek their invaluable views and guidance. The ANC has entered these discussions with an open mind and a commitment to speak to all parties that have a stated intention to advance the interests of the people of South Africa. As the NEC, we have already agreed in April 2023 on certain principles that should guide our approach to collaborating with other parties in coalitions. The principles we will collaborate with other parties are based on advancing the building of a united, democratic, non-racial, non-sexist, and prosperous nation. We further said that any such agreement of working with others must be based on a common minimum program that focuses on measurable targets for economic growth and inclusion on service delivery and development. All parties must commit to shared values, nation building, and social cohesion. Now these values include respect 
for the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa and the rule of law, social justice and equity, human dignity, non-racialism, and non-sexism. These values also include stability, accountability, transparency, integrity, community participation, and good governance. Agreements between parties who would be involved in this whole process should, in the end, be in writing. They should be public. They should also be transparent and include measures for holding all participants accountable. Our approach to how provincial governments are formed, where we do not have an outright majority, will be guided by the same principles. The ANC notes that we do have ideological and political differences with several parties in our political landscape. However, we will not preclude the possibility of working with any party so long as it is in the public interest and it is in keeping with the principles that they have articulated. Guided by these principles, understanding the needs of the country and appreciating the express will of the people, the National Executive Committee has agreed to seek agreement amongst parties on the formation of the Government of National Unity. This NEC has therefore mandated our negotiating task team to proceed to engage with parties on this proposal of a GNU. They will also reach out to a broader range of parties to enrich the process and promote inclusiveness. We have directed the task team under the guidance of the national officials, the working committee, to develop in greater detail the modalities and button down our principles and the governance framework to guide all the parties to the government of national unity to ensure that it is coherent and effective and is aimed at serving the interests of the people of South Africa. We have agreed as this NEC that it is both necessary and strategic that we act in a manner that seeks to unite the broadest range of social forces and isolate those that seek to cause chaos and instability and division. As the ANC, we will be reaching out to formations across society to build a shared program for social and economic change. In the coming days, we will be convening meetings of ANC structures to discuss